I want to talk about something that we call the attitude of gratitude just for a, a few minutes because this is Thanksgiving season and it's always important to give God glory. Hallelujah. Turn your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians 5.16 just as we get ready to get into worship. Amen. Rehab, turn your Bible to the book of 1 Thessalonians 5.16. I just fell in love with Rehab. She, she looks bullyable. <laughs> Please give me more on the microphone. Amen. So that I feel powerful. Amen. Amen. First Thessalonians 5, 16 uh, to 18. And let's just stand up in honor of the word of God. Amen. The Bible says God has exalted his word above his name. And so we honor his word. Hallelujah. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. Let us read together. One, two, go. It's on the screen. If you don't have a Bible, they're here. It's evermore. They're here. Pray without ceasing. Uh -huh. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Say that. It all concerning you. Amen. Say it again in everything and say louder. If you're an African parent and you yell at home, scream the way you yell at home. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Does it say in some things? It says in everything. Does it, does it say sometimes? No. It says in every? Yes. You can sit down in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, use me today to speak and let me make sense to these wonderful people in Jesus' name. Let my accent, you know, connect with the accents in Jesus' name and let there be communication. Give me the grace to communicate in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We always have an imagination that something great is coming in the future. So most of us, we live in the future. I mean, looking forward to the future because we know that my tomorrow will be greater than today. And that's great. It's important to have hope as a Christian. And uh, uh, hope is great. But there's this aspect of we don't live in the moment right now, appreciating the now. But we always look forward to another day tomorrow that will be better than today. Um, when you're, say, in primary school, you're looking forward to secondary school. When I was in primary, I was looking forward to secondary school. That's in Kenya. I don't know what you call them here, high school. I know. And then when you're in high school, you're looking forward to campus. When you're in campus, we're looking forward to getting married. No, not getting married, to meet someone. You know, there were even songs I used to sing like, where is he? Where is the man of my dreams? And then you meet him. You, <laughs> you start dating. Then when you date, you, you're looking forward to the wedding, you know. Uh, uh, those of you who didn't do a wedding, uh, we would, won't judge you. But we're always looking forward <laughs> to the wedding. And then when you get to the wedding, you know, it's now where to live, uh, what, what, you know, life. And it's like always, there's always something better. Now we need to move to America. You know, now we need you, greater things and greater things. But if we're not careful, we will live in the future and not in the now. Many times when you get to that place that you thought was the place, you start to ask, is that it? You want, you, you imagine there is more to that than where you are. There are things that you used to dream of, being in an aeroplane. I remember yesterday I was like, gosh, I'm in an aeroplane again tomorrow. I feel a bit stressed about it. And I'm thinking, there was a time in my life, I was thinking, man, I need to be in an aeroplane. It was a big deal, but right now I'm thinking, God, can we use air to fly just to appear like your disciples, the way they would have, like, you're going to Canada tomorrow, you just arrive there. And so when you get there, there's an aspect of us as human beings that we kind of want the next thing and, and, and forget to thank God for the thing that we have right now. Hallelujah. If we are not careful, we're going to be stuck on the next season, not appreciating this one. We believe that there's an amazing relationship 
And some of you are very unhappy in the relationship that you're in. And you're thinking there's an amazing one, amazing achievements in the future, amazing possessions, friendships, amazing vacations. The truth is that every corner, there's a new challenge, there's going to be a new goal in every achievement that you get to. So you better start giving thanks now because this is it. This is the heaven that you're living in. I was listening to Lubembe the other day and he was like, oh, these are the all good days when we were talking about my parents. He said, he said that and I said, wow, okay. That's the same thing. When I look at my pictures for, you know, where I was in 2018, I'm like, oh, those are the good old days. But at that time, I was stressed. You know, at certain things, small things that don't matter at all. But I came to tell you that today is the day that the Lord has made. The Bible says, rejoice. Rejoice always. Hallelujah. Giving thanks always. Hallelujah. Seven times in the Bible it says give thanks. 77 times. Uh, now, we're living in the era of social media. And in social media, you see all kinds of things. This is the, the, the generation of people with happy pictures, but they're sad on the inside. <laughs> and so sometimes, if you're not careful, you'll be taken and carried away by the happy people in pictures. They're happy in pictures, but in real life, they are sad. Everybody posts their best picture, right? See, even you. <laughs> but I came to encourage you that if we think like the world, we will always be discontent. If we think like the way the world thinks, we'll always be discontent. Discontentment is a disease that gets worse with age. The older you get, the worse it gets. And so my, my encouragement to you is to have the attitude of gratitude forever. And the attitude is also that, that whatever you're doing at this moment, you do it for God's glory. Can I tell you something? Jesus said in Matthew 16, 24, he said, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. There's a period in my life I began to be a bit discontent. And meanwhile, people think I'm famous and I'm doing well. And I begin to realize that discontentment is also unbelief. But I began to ask myself, why is it that when I get to that place that I was waiting for, I'm not as happy as I thought that I was going to be? I thought that if you get your first million, you're going to be happy. But I got there and I was thinking, I have more problems than I used to have before. I mean, isn't it amazing that when you thought you'd have more money, you realize you have more relatives who need money, you have more problems, more problems than you ever imagined. And so I began to ask myself, what is this life about? And so Matthew 16, 24 came as an answer for me for how to be grateful every day. So wait, wait for it, it's coming. So scripture says, you must deny yourself and take up the cross and follow me. Mm. Now the system of the world is treat yourself. You deserve it. You've worked so hard. But the kingdom of God is deny yourself. Now I want to submit to you and you will agree or disagree with me that the amount of joy you get while denying yourself is more than the joy that you will ever get from any achievement. Is that true? How many of you when you sacrifice and do something that you deny yourself, that's where you get the joy from. That should tell you that denying yourself will make you happier than just enjoying treating yourself. Am I making, are you following? Yes. Are you following? Yes. And so I do missions every now and then, and I keep saying that, and, I'm, and, and, and it's giving, 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 and we go into campuses. You give your money, you give your time, and I realize that after those missions, I am happier than any money that has ever come in my life. When you go to hard places, like if you come from Africa, if you go to those places without electricity, without water, hard places, those are the places when you deny yourself that you become really happy. What am I saying to you? Yesterday, we were talking in the car with, uh, uh, with my host, Chico, and she was telling me the other day, three kids who are from a well-off family burnt down the house, their parents' house, because they were bored. And I was like, these are children, they need to come to Africa. Because they will not be bored with the amount of imagination that you have. Of, Do you know dreams are very good? You, you, because you're thinking, in your head. And so these kids burn down this house, and I'm thinking they're bored because they have, they have so much, you know? 
and, and, and they don't have anything that's, everything is there. Food, there. Electricity, there. I mean, water, there. What problem do you have? Internet, there. I mean, in fact, life is very boring when you have everything there. Sometimes, you know, challenges are good. They make life happen. Amen. And so, my whole point when I'm saying all these things is that you, our lives can be boring when we're comfortable. But our lives will be amazing when we deny ourselves. Our lives will be amazing if we decide to tell somebody about Jesus as uncomfortable as we are. You will be glad that you did it because you denied yourself the comfort of being an introvert, of being mind your own business kind of person and doing it for the benefit of the kingdom. Hallelujah. The happiness is in what that you do daily in denying yourself. Are you getting me? If you want to be happy, say yes. yes. You got to deny yourself and you will realize that you're more thankful than when you had it. You have everything flowing, you know, your time, you just sit, you watch TV. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So we, we don't have to live waiting for tomorrow. The joy of our lives is in today. When you begin to realize that it's not just about treating yourself, you begin to rejoice always. One of the men of God that I really admire as I finish is Paul. Paul says, he works harder. In 1 Corinthians 15, he says, I worked harder than all of them. Yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Now, there's no point in the Bible that you will ever hear Paul complaining. He's not complaining. He's speaking always of God's grace. He's saying he did everything for God's glory. You know, and when you look at his life, everywhere there was pain. He was in prison for years. If some of us were put in prison today, just imagine prison. We'd be asking God, God, what did I do? Forgive me for the sins of my fathers and my forefathers. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We would be complaining day and night, wondering which curse is upon my father? No. My mother? No. You know, but you know, Paul was in prison. Paul suffered for the sake of the gospel, but he was more joyful than a lot of us are with money in the bank. Hallelujah. And so denying uh, ourselves brings joy. That's my whole point. Paul says, three times I was beaten by rods. That's in 2 Corinthians 11, 25. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeys often. In perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, uh, in perils of the city, the wilderness, in the sea, in fasting often. When was the last time you fasted? In cold and nakedness, besides other things, what comes upon me daily is his deep concern for the churches. He was living the life. No wonder he would say, Rejoice always. Hallelujah. No wonder he was saying rejoice always because he had had the experience of living the life of not complaining. He was beaten up with rods. Have you been beaten anywhere? If you are beaten, you will sue those people because this is America. <laughs> he was sleepless often uh, for the sake of, he had a job and he was preaching the gospel. And so it is his attitude you know, of living in the now, rejoicing in the Lord always, thanking God always in the pain, in prison, in being beaten, in being shipwrecked. You know, when he was in prison, he didn't say, I can't wait for the day I leave prison so that I write books. He wrote books that we read even today while he was in prison. That tells you that he had the spirit of no complaining. And so I want to finish by reading Philippians 2.14. Put it up, jockey. Philippians 2.14. This is what Paul said. Do all things. Can you see it? Yes. Read it loudly. Do all, all things. things. Tell your neighbor. All. 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 All things without murmuring yes. and disputings. My Bible says do everything without complaining and disputing. Uh -huh, let's go on. The next one. 15, darling. The next line. Okay. Okay, that you may be blameless. Uh -huh. yeah. So if you're complaining, you are you are harmful, stroke, blame, you are full of blame. Yeah. Let's go on. Uh -huh. Sons of God, without, uh -huh. in the midst. Okay, my Bible says without fault, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as light in the world. 
So that what, what that means is, if you are a complainer, you are crooked. Mm. Mm -hmm. It means you are perverse. Yeah. You are like the people of the world. Abi ya jirani yako if they understand so anyway ni mtu wa dunia. Turn to your neighbor tell them wewe ni mtu wa dunia. Kama wewe ni complainer. No make sure they understand. Please take this assignment seriously. Turn to your neighbor. Turn to your neighbor because they have to understand tell them you are a person of the world. If you are a complainer. Are those my words? Are those my words? Is it not what the Bible is saying? And so the opposite of giving thanks is murmuring and complaining. Amen. Children, the opposite of giving thanks always is murmuring and complaining. Scripture says be thankful always. And if you open your mouth and you begin to realize that you're complaining, you will understand that you're not thankful and you're totally disobeying and not appreciating what God has done for you. Murmuring and complaining is the system of the world. Let me say that again. Let me say it like an African pine. Murmuring and complaining is a system of the world. Have you seen it on the internet? That when you put up a post on something, anything, people will be cursing. And you're like, what is the problem? I mean, I, have, I don't even know you. You know, just a small thing. People are angry. Have you seen Kenyan news? Negative comments. Okay, I'm not in Ruto's party, but he just went to Kawangware. Comments. Zakayo, thief. <laughs> he went to steal at Kawangware, you know. And that kind of murmuring, it, even it is worse in America. Just open a, a, a post on, on anything, you know, the president of this country has done. It's like people are cussing. They have the F words, the other words, because it's the people of the world. That's how they do it. And so you cannot be one among them. Yes. Those people that open your mouth, you just open your mouth and then you just begin complaining because you are not grateful. That is the system of, the, I thought it was only in Africa, but it is in America where they don't have malaria and they don't have potholes on the road. <laughs> they are complaining everywhere and you're thinking, gosh, I mean those kids who burned that house, Shiko, it's because they were not grateful over anything that their parents have done. They're like, we are the real celebrities, do it for us, entitled. I put up a post the other day on King Charles was in our country. King Charles, you know King Charles, uh, London? So he was in our country, so I put, I put up a comment uh, on his post and said, wow, thank you, we're so honored to have you. Do you know Kenyans are calling me hypocrite? <laughs> How am I a hypocrite? I just said thank you for coming. I'm like, why are they so angry? You know, I think it has come to, this is colonial too, something, all kinds of things. I'm thinking, why are people just so angry? Why are we always complaining? We can see things from a different perspective. That's right. Because even if they have come to colonize us, God will take care of us. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he says, do all things in everything. In your talking, you have to be positive vibes like pastor. Full time, good vibes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. And when you're correcting people, you correct them with love because you have hope that they will change. Yes. You have positive vibes. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we have grace to go and face anything in life. There is sufficient grace for us to face the challenges in our marriages today. There is sufficient grace for you to face anything in life today. And so that's why scripture says, thank God always. Every pain that you go through, it is important. It is part of the story. Without pain, you are going to burn the house like those children. Pain is important. Pain is very important for you children today. If you treat your children with comfort throughout, they'll burn your house. You need to put some pain in their system. You know I'm going back to Africa. <laughs> We complain about children here, but, but but you know, you guys know how to put pain. I hear pain here is cutting the Wi-Fi. <laughs> pain. I mean, in Africa, you can, they can sleep outside. That's part of pain. And we'll be fine tomorrow, but hey, God is good. It's your life, guys. You made the choice. You'll know how to handle it. <laughs> Amen. And so the attitude of murmuring cost the children of Israel not to get into their promised land. You will not get... The 
attitude of ingratitude caused the children of Israel not to get to their place of promise. My own daughter said, Belicate. This is America. <laughs> amen. Amen. I may, amen. I promise you, complaining will lead you not to lose a lot of things in life. Not being grateful for the things that have been done for you by God and by men will lead you to your grave. I'm telling you, you will lead, you will lead a very unhappy life if you never learn to be grateful children. If you never learn to be grateful to the people that invested in you. I mean, you need to sit down and, and think about what God has done for you and what other people have done for you and be grateful. I believe that even us sometimes, there are people who, as much as you've invested in others, there are people who invested in your life when you were growing up that you need to go back to and say thank you for you did this. And God will bless you because the culture of honor is important. And I see a generation rising and especially uh, now that has no honor and I'm worried about the future. Because without honor, the Bible says if you don't honor your parents, you, 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 you won't live long. And your parents are not just the ones that give birth to you. Your parents are people that have invested in you. Your parents are people that have given anything positive in your life. Your teachers, your, your, the people that, your pastors, whatever it is, you need to go back and say thank you for being a blessing to me. Hallelujah. And so I just want to say that complaining is returning evil for good. When God has done you so well, you need to trust him with just being grateful. That's why scripture says be grateful always. And people are going through all circumstances right now. But the scripture says that all things work together for good for those that love the Lord. Whatever you're going through is working for good. You may not understand why that pain is working, how it is working for good. But let me tell you, don't waste pain. Let pain accomplish its work in, in your life. Some of the most wonderful people in the world have gone through pain. I can tell you for sure, your pastor has gone through proper pain, pain for him to be that positive vibes. Amen. Pain is what makes people beautiful. Hallelujah. And so thank him for the pain. It may not make sense right now. It may not make sense at all today. Why you're going through what you're going through. But it's going to work for good. And so just lift up your hands and say, Father, I thank you for the good and the bad. And I will rejoice always. And I will praise you continually. And I will give thanks in all circumstances. One more time, say, Lord, I thank you for this far that you have brought me. Teach me to deny myself. In Jesus' name. Amen. And I just want to call, amen. Call the Washington, come over here, guys. Let's do this.